Have you ever considered what happens beneath the ocean surface when we take more than what is naturally replenished? Overfishing. A term that's bandied about but perhaps not fully understood. It's not just about running out of fish to eat, though that's a concern too. No, overfishing is a complex issue with far-reaching implications. It's a destructive force that's quietly unbalancing our marine ecosystems, threatening biodiversity, and creating unseen ripples that extend far beyond the ocean's surface. Let's delve a little deeper, shall we? Picture a thriving, vibrant ocean, a delicate web of life where each creature, large or small, plays a vital role. Now, imagine if one thread in that web were to disappear. The effect would be subtle at first, but over time it could unravel the entire system. That's what happens when we overfish when we catch fish faster than they can reproduce. It's not just the fish population that suffers. The predators that rely on them for food also struggle, and the prey that the fish would have eaten, they multiply unchecked, causing another set of problems. This domino effect ripples through the ecosystem, upsetting the balance and threatening the survival of countless species. Overfishing also threatens biodiversity, the variety of life in the ocean. Each species has a unique role in maintaining the health of the ecosystem. When one species is depleted due to overfishing, the entire system can be thrown off balance. And let's not forget the seafloor habitats. Many fishing methods are destructive, tearing up the ocean floor and destroying the habitats of countless species. Coral reefs, seagrass beds, and other important habitats are damaged, further threatening biodiversity and the health of the ocean. But overfishing doesn't just affect marine life, it affects us too. The ocean provides us with food, livelihoods, and even the oxygen we breathe. When we disrupt its balance, we're not just harming the fish, we're risking our own future. As we can see, overfishing doesn't just affect the fish, it affects the entire ocean ecosystem. That's the test Now let's dive into the cold hard facts about overfishing. Overfishing is not just an environmental concern. It's a crisis. A crisis that's been brewing beneath the waves for decades, mostly unseen and largely ignored. A staggering 90% of the world's fisheries are now fully exploited, overexploited, or have already collapsed. That's right, 9 out of 10. It's a sobering reality that emphasizes the enormity of the problem. Now let's consider the species that are the most affected. Bluefin tuna, Atlantic cod, and halibut are all on the brink of extinction due to overfishing. These aren't just random species. These are staples in our diets, the stars of our seafood platters. The disappearance of these species would not only disrupt marine ecosystems, but also significantly impact our food chain and global economies. It's not just about the big fish though. Small species like krill and sardines, often overlooked, are crucial components of the marine food web. Their populations have declined dramatically due to overharvesting for fish meal and omega-3 supplements. This decline has a cascading effect, threatening larger species and entire ecosystems. And then there's the issue of bycatch. For every pound of shrimp caught, up to three pounds of non-target species, including sea turtles, dolphins, and juvenile fish, are discarded as waste. This indiscriminate wastage is not only ecologically irresponsible, it's also ethically indefensible. The numbers are indeed stark, but what's even more alarming is the speed at which this is happening. The rate of fishing is increasing exponentially, far outpacing the ocean's ability to replenish its stocks. If this continues, scientists predict that we could see virtually empty oceans by the middle of this century. Now these aren't just abstract figures. These are windows into a future that we are shaping. A future that looks increasingly bleak, 
for our oceans and for us. But it's not too late to change course. It's not too late to turn the tide. The numbers speak for themselves, painting a grim picture of our ocean's health. Contestants, it is a noise But how does overfishing affect us, the people who live on land? Well, the ripple effect of overfishing on human life is substantial and wide-ranging. The most immediate impact is on the fishing communities themselves. Millions of people around the globe rely on the sea for their livelihood. When fish populations dwindle, these communities face economic hardship. Imagine a small coastal town where generations of families have made their living from the sea. As fish become scarce, these families struggle to make ends meet. The loss of livelihood can lead to social instability, forcing people to migrate, causing a ripple effect on land-based communities and economies. But the impact of overfishing extends beyond these coastal towns. It's about food security. Fish is a primary source of protein for billions of people worldwide. Overfishing threatens this vital food source. When the fish are gone, what will these people eat? The scarcity of fish can lead to increased prices, making it unaffordable for many. This hits the poorest the hardest, especially in developing countries where fish often make up a significant portion of the diet. And let's not forget the economic consequences. The fishing industry as a whole contributes billions to the world economy. It's not just about the people catching the fish, but also those involved in processing, transporting, and selling it. Overfishing puts all these jobs at risk, causing an economic downturn that can affect us all. Moreover, overfishing disrupts the balance of marine ecosystems, which can have unforeseen consequences. For instance, eliminating a particular species of fish could allow another, potentially harmful species to proliferate. This can lead to what scientists call a trophic cascade, affecting everything from the health of our oceans to the quality of the air we breathe. Overfishing thus has profound implications for humanity as well. It's not just a problem for the fish or for the people who rely directly on fishing. It's a problem for all of us. Let's remember, we are all interconnected in this vast web of life. How have we rejoined how have we reached this critical point of overfishing? Well, let's delve into the practices and policies that have brought us to this, to this juncture. Overfishing isn't a phenomenon that just happened overnight. It's a culmination of years of unchecked practices, lax enforcement of fishing regulations, and the use of destructive fishing methods. Let's start with illegal fishing. It's a shadowy industry that operates in the dark corners of our oceans, often out of sight and out of mind. These unregulated operations plunder our seas without any regard for sustainability or the long-term health of our marine ecosystems. It's a classic case of out of sight, out of mind, and it's doing untold damage to our oceans. Then, there's the lack of enforcement of fishing regulations. In many parts of the world, Fishing regulations are simply not stringent enough, and even when they are, enforcement is often weak. This lack of enforcement leads to over-exploitation of marine resources, and it's a significant contributing factor to overfishing. Furthermore, destructive fishing methods are decimating our marine life. Practices like bottom trawling where a large net is dragged across the sea floor are incredibly harmful. These methods don't just catch the targeted species. They also scoop up everything else in their path, including coral reefs and other vital habitats. It's akin to bulldozing a forest just to catch a few birds. And let's not forget about the role of subsidies. In some cases, governments provide financial support to the fishing industry which can lead to overcapacity and thus overfishing. While these subsidies are often well-intentioned, they can have unintended consequences if they're not carefully managed. It's a complex and multifaceted issue with no easy solutions. 
but the first step is acknowledging the problem. We need to shine a light on these unchecked practices and lenient policies that have pushed us to the brink of a crisis. Unchecked practices and lenient policies have pushed us to the brink of a crisis. Aito, are we doomed to a future without fish? Not necessarily. The future of our oceans lies in our hands and it's time to take action. The solutions to overfishing are in sight, if we're willing to embrace them. So let's dive into this sea of potential fixes. Firstly, sustainable fishing practices are crucial to preserving our marine life. This approach involves adhering to fishing seasons, respecting marine protected areas, and using equipment that minimizes bycatch. It's about taking what we need and leaving the rest for nature to replenish. There are already success stories out there. For example, in the North Atlantic, fishermen have adopted these methods, leading to a revival of cod stocks that were once on the brink of collapse. Secondly, stricter regulations need to be enforced globally. Governments must step up and implement policies that limit the quantity and type of fish that can be caught. They need to crack down on illegal fishing and ensure that all fishing activities are transparent and traceable. The Pacific Island nations, with their Vessel Day scheme, have shown us that such regulations can effectively manage fish stocks while ensuring fair income for local communities. Lastly, we as consumers have a role to play too. By making informed choices, we can drive the demand for sustainably sourced seafood. This means checking labels, asking questions, and choosing restaurants and retailers that source responsibly. Every time we do this, we're casting a vote for sustainable fishing. These solutions aren't just theoretical, they're being put into practice around the world with promising results. The tide is beginning to turn, but we need to keep pushing, keep innovating, and keep caring about our oceans and the life they support. With concerted efforts, we can turn the tide on overfishing. The future of our oceans, our fish, and our planet depends on it. Let's make sure we're building a legacy we can be proud of.